Today, we are joined by the organization guru, Tiffany Spalding of Totally Tiffany. Welcome. I'm so excited to be here. I have had such a great, great day. It's always so nice to visit here. This is such a wonderful environment to be in. Just a little bit of background on Tiffany. You are a wife and mother of two who recently moved from Washington to Arizona, which is where we are headquartered here at scrapbook.com. And you started your business in 2003. We're going to get into that. And you are a storage and organization aficionado. So welcome again. We are going to dig into all things organization today. I think you're going to love it. Yay. Yay. So tell us a little bit about your story, about how you got into crafting. It's kind of a funny story about scrapbooking and and your not so great love for it at first. Right. Um, I didn't love anything crafty. I was raised by a mother who actually has a master's degree in fine arts and she was an artist. And even as a kid, I wasn't, that wasn't my jam. I wasn't into that. Um, I liked to play office and file things as a kid. Shock. Um, (laughs) So my sister invites me to a party. I find out through a couple of phone calls and some weird requests to bring photos that it is a creative memories party. And I say to her, you know what? Here's the deal. No, I'm not (laughs) spending Friday night doing crafty things. However, I am not opposed to supporting you. And I have lots of crafty friends. Send me a catalog. I'll spend some money. I don't mind doing that. I just don't want to spend Friday night crafting. And she, you know, basically throws down on me and says, nope, uh, not only your older sister, I'm your bigger sister. And you have to come to the party. So I show up there like a teenage girl with a bad attitude, you know, arms crossed, eye roll, head shake. <sighs> don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. I can't believe this. I throw my pictures on the table. She hands me a glass of wine. Things get a little <laughs> bit better right there. But 30 minutes later, I was a scrapbooking goddess. Oh, I mean, yes. I had created the most amazing layout. Now, you guys listening, you know this layout, right? Two triangles of color. Pictures cut into heart shapes and star shapes. Mrs. Grossman stickers everywhere. Oh, yes. oh yeah. I was so good <laughs> with decorative edge scissors. I was thinking about trimming my own hair. <laughs> and I just thought, I love this. This is great. What can I? And so I was hooked right there. I mean, I had the fever bad. I was, I bought everything. I'm going to do a book for me, for my parents, for my husband's parents, for each of the kids. I mean, I went home loaded with everything. Like I even said to the lady, the rep, do you, is this everything you have? Is there anything in the trunk of your car? How far away do you live? Are there things at your house? What do I need? I got to get set up. And um, that was it. I was addicted. Went home. My husband shook his head and said, you're not an art girl. You're not a craft girl. This is going to last three months. And that was over 20 years ago now. Wow. So you proved him wrong. Huh? I proved him wrong. That wasn't the first thing. But no. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, so, and I've been in love with it ever since. And, and I got overwhelmed and with too much stuff. And I am, as you all know, a bit of a neat freak. And I almost quit crafting. Like I thought, I love this, but I can't do this. It is driving me crazy. And that's kind of how the scrap rack was born. So I designed it for myself and my friends said, you should make that and sell it. And I said, I've, I had just sold a business and I said, nope, I'm going to be a writer and a waitress. I'm not doing business things anymore, blah, blah, blah. And um, I wrote a few articles for scrapbooking magazines and was like, this is great. My friends kept saying, you should make that. Then I mortgaged my house and found a factory and that was 19 years ago so now, two, or yeah, 2003. We started in 2003, so Well, be. tell us a little bit about how that, that idea for the scrap rack was born. Um, well, I had a mess everywhere. I didn't have a craft room. You know, there's all the little bits and pieces. And so I started organizing things into notebooks, which didn't work really well, but it was better than the other, I guess, piles mm-hmm. of things. And um, then I tore the backs off the binders and had them, my husband built this board and I glued them with like a Gorilla Glue adhesive to the board and so I could flip through them. And then I found one of those catalog racks from the auto parts store. Mm -hmm. They had these weird hooks. So you can't really open and add things to them, but the idea was right. And so I was using that. And then when I got to this, like, okay, now I'm going to make this and sell this. So then by the time I went to the factory, when I was at factory phase, then I was looking for a factory that could make something with that commercial grade of hook and loop and the right adhesive and the right three ring sections. We call them spinders. And that was pretty much it. I mortgaged the house and rolled the dice. And here I am nearly 20 years later, still 
scrapbooking, cool. still craft, crafting more, doing more kinds of craft. Like it sort of evolved into other things. Many so, other things. Many other which things. If, if you haven't seen her line of products, there is nothing that you haven't thought of that you could organize into a system or something. So we're excited to talk about some of those as well. For those who aren't watching on video, we, we do have this on video on our YouTube channel. Um, so you can see what the scrap rack looks like. How would you describe it to the listeners who are listening to our podcast? Like, how would you describe what the scrap rack is and what it contains? Like, how you can um, organize with it? I would say, like, if I was going to paint a visual for you, I would say take a series of notebooks and line them up at a nice 45 degree angle on your desktop and imagine just flipping through. Like we say, give up the dig and search for the flip and find. But literally, well, and I'll tell you one of the other reasons the scrap rack works is because it's not just a tool. Like so often you'll buy an organization thing and it's just an empty thing and mm -hmm. they say fill it up. With the scrap rack, we um, develop developed a whole system of how to put things in and what order to put things in. So imagine if you've got all these binders open on your desk and you can just flip to your birthday section mm -hmm. and then you want to add red flowers. And so you go to your rainbow section and you pull out those red flowers. So it really does, it's like a catalog, I guess. Yeah. yeah. It is a catalog of your supplies organized by theme, holiday, event, rainbow. It's super simple, really easy. I did, I've done a a ton of brain study, like why, why are, why am I organized and other people are not right. Mm -hmm. And about how the brain works and how people make connections in their brain. And so when I was developing that system, I, it had to be something that everybody, that made sense to everybody. And so those things, alphabets and numbers, which is section one, themes and sentiments, uh, calendar year and the rainbow, everybody knows those things. Right. And your brain's already used to that. So fitting it in, was simple or is simple for most people. I mean, you know, the number of people in my career who have said to me, oh my gosh, this is so great and it's so easy. I wish I would have thought of it. And then I have to say to them, I'm glad that you didn't because I have a job. <laughs> That's why I'm like, you can speak French or do calculus, stick with that. And let me Be figure, it. yeah, let me do this. So yeah, so everybody has different talents and different like skill sets. And um, yeah, I'm excited that I found something and, um, and amazing people, right? Like every, we talked about this a little bit earlier, everybody, here is having a good time, right? Yeah. It's people having joy or not having joy. And that's why they've come to me. They've just to say, hey. Help me. Yeah. Right. This isn't fun anymore. And yeah. then I'm like, I know that happened to me. Right. That's how that's how I was. So, and yeah. then some of us crafters just love organizing the supplies as much as they do the crafting. <laughs> right. So that is fun too. <laughs> it is you fun. you have all the system set up. So Yeah. And it's pretty. It is. And you, you get to play with your things. Yes. Right? It's like. And we have, we have classes on scrapbook.com that you can see that Tiffany's done in the past as well as she's filming some new ones. So we'll be watching for those, but on how to set up your whole system and how to organize pretty much everything you can think of. So just so much, your wealth of information. And we just are so appreciative of you sharing that with us. Yeah. And it's fun. It's really it's fun. fun. So we want to dig in today. You've got some great tips for anyone who's getting ready to get organized. And maybe it's just overwhelming and you think, I don't even know where to start. I've just got all of this clutter. Or I know in my own craft room, sometimes we just have so much stuff that we're not able to utilize it because we can't find it or we don't know where it is. And then we go out and buy more, which is always fun. But but sometimes it's just nice to have the organization system so you know what you have. Yes. So let's start. We're, we're going to go through five tips today. And the first one that you say is to start small and start now. Yes. So the biggest challenge for people, especially when you feel overwhelmed, is just getting started because you look at your whole room or space, whatever it is. So when I say room, that could be six totes under your bed or a closet or two rooms. But you look at it and you go, there's just so much in there. Like I have stories of people saying to me, they open their craft room door and they look in, they want to craft and they think it's going to be more fun to do laundry and they close the door and leave. Mm -hmm. So if you don't let yourself get overwhelmed and the way to avoid that is by starting small and doing it, just jumping in, whether you have five minutes, 10 minutes or an hour, choose one small project and just organize that one thing. And that one thing will lead you to the next thing. And the next thing, because this is probably going to come up again and again, what happens in your brain when you complete something is your brain has a little party. Woo! Look, I got that done, right? Especially if it's something that you've been overwhelmed with. So if you start small and start now, you'll get that one little win and it's going to lead you to the next thing. But it can just be something 
mean, it can be an inch of paper or one little box of breads. It doesn't matter. Just one thing. And then you go, yeah, I did that. Or your washi tapes. Or like, just think of maybe right. a, a, a thing that you want to start organizing and just focus on that one, one That one product thing. And then go from yep. there. And keep it, it, it doesn't have to be major. It can just be one tiny yeah. thing. So, um, and that's, that's probably the most important thing because then you can do one more small thing. Yeah. One more small thing. And then pretty soon... You've got a big thing done. That's so, great. I yeah. love that. All right. Number two is stick with the system. Ooh. One of the things that happens when I first started in my career, I would go to people's homes and help them. This is really how I learned, like how different people think and learn and how they take in information. This and raising two children, mm-hmm. right? You learn some things. Um, and so I would go and I would um, say, well, what have you done? And without exception, they had all tried all these different ways of organizing. And some things were around containers. I'm going to put everything in this. And then we get new supplies and they don't fit in that container anymore. And you got to have this different container. And then how does that work? That was overwhelming. Sometimes people would take all their stuff and spread it out and then forget that they had company coming. And so they had to take all that stuff and dump it back in the box. And your brain doesn't say you have a good system you have a good idea for a system, but a bad method of executing it, your brain says that didn't work, right? And then you try something else. Well, one of the beauties of the four section system is it does work and it works regardless of the tools that you're using, whether you're using a scrap rack or a 12 by 12 pizza box. If you follow that system every day, all the time, you can't go wrong. So Switching systems all the time is a bad idea because your brain never learns the system or it's always trying to figure out how to game the system, like that doesn't really work. So I'm going to just tell you, there's very few things that I'm sort of hardcore about. And one of them is the four section system. You have to get your things organized in a way that your brain works. And that is the simple, we'll get you guys some downloads so you can put them up with the podcast oh, or whatever. So people can to print that off and like kind of the steps for getting there. What are the four sections? So the four, first section is alphanumeric. So that's everything that's letter number or punctuation mark, but not theme specific, right? Okay. Um, and that could be anything that really has to do with creating words or titles. So um, if you use the alignment guides for stickers, right, or if you use something like Titletopia, these are all things that go in that same mental category. And if you have them all together, when you flip to your alphabet section and you see those title guides, you're, oh, I can use this. I'm going to use it rather than burying it in a drawer. So uh, section one, alphabets and numbers. Section two is themes and sentiments. And those go A to Z, beach, baby, birthday, camping, all the things we craft about. And when I say sentiments, if you think, oh, this doesn't apply to me, I'm not a scrapbook or I'm a card maker, congratulations, birthday, bon voyage, happy retirement, those fall into that sentiments category. Mm-hmm. So same idea. Uh, third section is the calendar year, January to December, all your holidays and all your seasons. And I'll tell you what, I get people ask me all the time, can I, um, why do I need the holiday and seasons? Why can't I put Halloween under H and fall under F and Thanksgiving under T? And then I don't have to have that whole extra section. Mm -hmm. But our goal is to keep things together we use together and to see everything we could possibly use as easy as possible. Well, if Halloween's under H and Thanksgiving's under T and fall is under F, then the pumpkins and the leaves and the you know, turkeys and all that stuff that could work, right? They could work on any of those pages or cards or home decor items. Now you have to remember that they're in three different places and go looking. And I'll tell you the other thing now that we're back to traveling again. If you're going to an event and you want to work on fall pages or fall cards, it's a lot easier to grab the fall section. Mm -hmm. Everything's together. And then it's a lot easier to put it away when you get home. So again, you don't have to rely on your memory, which... After a certain age, not so reliable, right? Right. <laughs> right. I understand that, yes. Um, so that uh, third section is calendar year. And then the last section is the rainbow. And the rainbow is the most difficult for people to get their brains around because we are sort of trained. Flowers go here, beads go here, buttons over here, ephemera here, right? All spread around. Mm-hmm. And um, you mentioned earlier about buying duplicates of things. Mm-hmm. So... When you have the rainbow section together, it does a lot of things for you. Um, The first thing is, if you think, I need red brads, when you ask your brain that, do I have red brads, it's going to return an answer, yes, you do. Then you have to ask that second question, where are they, 
Ugh. And if your brain returns back, oh, um, they're in your room somewhere, but it'll be faster to go to scrapbook.com and <laughs> order some and get them tomorrow, then it's going to be for you to find them in there, right? That's it's a like problem. You're reading my mind. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so that rainbow section, when you go to red, you're going to find your brads, but you're also going to see flowers and glitter and bling and all the other things that you have that might also work on that project. Mm -hmm. So you're going to find your thing that you're looking for and you're going to use more of your products and you're going to use more of your knowledge, right? You take all these classes and then you forget about flowers mm -hmm. with Brad button centers and how to do all that stuff. So there's all that benefit. The other benefit is if you go to your red section and there are no red brads, then you have license to shop. There you go. Right? You know, I'm out of red brands. I should go and order them right now. So it does, there's a lot more to it than just having your stuff organized. So I, I, I talk a little bit about um, organization versus containerization. So containerization is putting all your things away. Organization is a system that encompasses not only the things, but how, where, and when, and why you use them. Mm -hmm. So that you've got the access, you've got the visibility, everything's working together rather than just what container is that in? Mm -hmm. So, and that, that is where the four section system is going to, you will love it. Change I mean, my life. Yes. Simple, it simple, will. simple. That's great. So our third tip here is perfect is the enemy of good. This mm, is so important. It's so important. I wish I was the one that came up with that, but anybody who has taken any sort of literature knows that that's a quote from Voltaire, but it's so perfect. It's perfect for everything, but it's not the enemy of good. It is a perfect set statement. Um, the thing with organization is there is no perfect system. But if you were going to organize only one thing, paint, you might be able to come up with the perfect system provided every color of paint and every type of paint was in the exact same jar and mm -hmm. needed to have the exact same requirements and all that. So there is no perfect thing. What you want is a good system. You want something that's solid and reliable that you can depend on and that you know in your head. So when you're looking for product, you know where to go and where to find it. And that means you're gonna sacrifice some perfection. Double-sided paper is a huge issue for people. I have this paper and it's green on one side and it's red on the other side and I can't put it in green and I can't put it in red because, uh, and really my advice is, where are you most likely to use it? Do you love the green? Do you love the red? Do you not like either side? Then it's gonna go in your perch box, mm -hmm. right? But don't make it complicated. And at the point that it gets complicated to put things away, that means your brain is tired, that you're exhausted and you're not able to, because you should be able to make those decisions quickly. When you can't make those decisions quickly anymore, it's time to take a walk or change track or whatever. I don't, willpower is finite every day. And if you've used yours up, it's time to move on and do something else. But really don't, don't expect perfection. This is your permission. We're giving you permission to not be perfect, right? So it, and that really is the, a key for a lot of people. And it goes back to that first thing, start small and start now. People want to have something perfect before they get started. And there is no perfect. You right. just have to jump in and get it done and accept that perfection is not a thing. That's really good, especially in today's world of Pinterest and Instagram. <gasps> they look at everything and think, oh, I've got to have my craft room look like this. And if it you know, or I've got to have right. my, my layout look like this and, and they get overwhelmed and so they don't even start. Right. And that's a really, really great point because when you look on Pinterest, especially sometimes Instagram, you see these beautiful rooms or these beautiful spaces for people to craft in. And when you really start examining the room, no one could possibly craft there, mm -hmm. right? It might not have the right space or accessing things is difficult. And if you're really crafting, things are always a little bit disheveled. Right. And I think if you look at my studio on some of the other videos that I've done, it's not glamorous. It's functional, mm -hmm. right? If you want a functional room, but then that's a very different thing than a Pinterest. This is just a photo shoot room and hopefully someone you know can edit photos to make it even look better. But right. yeah, we're all about function in this, in crafting, right? I want to find yeah. my stuff and use my stuff. So yeah. Well, it's like those photos of homes online where you're like, okay, there are no toddlers in this <laughs> right. house, you know? So again, <laughs> or cats or, or yeah, dogs or people, right. Maybe. Or so. anybody who walks through with mud on their shoes, who wasn't supposed to, or they're lovely to look at. But when you think, does someone, does that look comfortable yeah. to live in? Right. 
So really your craft room should be comfortable to live in. You want to go in there and experience joy and creativity. And that's a room where things are accessible and and fun to work with as opposed to fun to look at, right? That's a museum. Right. It's fun, right? right. And you're going to get a little messy when you're creating and that's that's okay. And then there's a place afterwards to right. be able to put everything. Well, and even to your point that your, your layouts aren't going to be perfect. They're not going to be... They're going to be you. Mm -hmm. They're going to have all of your, all the beauty of you and all the mistakes of you and all the weirdness of you. And that is why it's yours. And so you work so hard to make something look unreal mm -hmm. and it doesn't really tell your story. And that's, and it's for ourselves. So mm -hmm. we don't have to think of creating something to share online. Like that, right. that, that we have to get over that too. So just right. create to create. So. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. This isn't for likes. This is for love like yes. you love it so yeah so good all right tip number four purge love it or lose it <sighs> what do you recommend for people when they're having when they're needing to purge Ugh. how do we go about this purging is the hardest it is the hardest thing for people to do and especially uh especially women so the majority of our audience attaches emotionally to things right we bring we buy those things and bring them into our home for a certain reason I recently did a craft room cleanup with my sister and her room was packed. I mean, it was just packed with stuff. She had everything on those rolling shelves from Costco. And um, so I said to her, you know, you're going to have to get rid of some stuff. She said, I'm not. I'm not getting rid of anything, right? This is my stuff. I love all my stuff. I'm not arms up, not doing it. And um, I said, well, that's part of the exercise. You, you have to get rid of something, some things you have to get rid of. And there was a shoe box on the floor. And I said, what about this shoe box? Can you fill this shoe? Can you fill this shoe box with stuff? And she goes, the shoe box? And I go, yeah. She goes, that's all you're telling me. I just have to fill that shoe box. And my sister been crafting her whole life, right? So she's the one that invited you to the party. Yeah, she's the one that invited you. It's all her. It's all her. It's all her. It's all her problem. Um, she goes, yeah, yeah, I can fill a shoebox. Sure, I'll do the shoebox. And we filled literally two truckloads of stuff wow. from her craft room. And one of the things that helps you purge is transferring that emotion. Um, so I'll tell you a story about love it or lose it too. I, don't let me forget. Okay, transferring that emotion. And so she's in a new area. She, a couple of her friends are school teachers, small country school. They don't have a lot of money. And so for her to be able to transfer all those art supplies, yes. she was literally transferring that emotion it's at the same time. Yes. Yeah. yeah, to somebody who would love it like mm -hmm. she loved it and use it like she thought it should be used. And so that's a key for you. If you're having trouble purging, then that is one of the things to do. Find somewhere to donate your supplies that um, that you can transfer that emotion. The other thing that bothers people about purging is the money, right? I mm -hmm. wasted my money on this. And it's a little bit harsh, but yeah, you did. It's wasted. You bought something you didn't use. That's wasted money. So you have some options. You can bag it up and sell it on eBay. You can, oh, I had one gal, brilliant. She bagged up all her stuff by theme that she wasn't using. And when she went to a crop, she would see, like she had all this cruise stuff. And she would see somebody working on cruise pictures and she would say like, here's a bag of cruise Aww, stuff. Great idea. Yeah, if you don't use it, pass it on. But yeah, she just transferred that. Yes. Like, here it is. Somebody's going to get some use out of it. So there's that. And I think um, I had this experience with a friend where I was at a movie and it was terrible. And I said, I'm going to go next door to the Mexican restaurant and get a margarita and I'll meet you there when you're done. And he was like, what? What do you mean? You can't leave. We spent $15 on the movie. And I go, I've already wasted the money. I'm not wasting the time. Right. Oh, good. Good point. Right. So the same thing in your craft room. If you have stuff you're not using, you are wasting your time and your energy and it's taking up space and you're providing storage for it. And it's weighing you down when you're flipping through and looking for things and getting and then you're damaging. I mean, there's all these things that happen. You might as well let it go and not waste any anything else other than that money, if you want to call it wasted, but yeah, so Pro maybe it's like our closets where they say if you haven't worn something in like a year or two years, then you can purge it. Do you feel like that's the same kind of thing, like in the craft room? If if you haven't used it in several years or fifteen years, you know, can we, can we get rid of it? <laughs>
I absolutely do. You know, one of the important things to keep in mind about crafting is that it's a fashion forward hobby, just like your closet mm -hmm. is fashion forward. So if you are saving and you know it, ladies, crafters, look back. Okay, when I first started scrapbooking, there were those printed pages. It would like be a picture of a train and you were supposed to cut out a picture and put oh, it yes. in each of the box cars, yeah. right? Um, there's all kinds of stuff, the color, the patterns, the textures, they all evolve with fashion. And you're going to look at that stuff that's 10, 12, 15 years old. And if it's not light damaged and torn around the edges, or if the stickers are no longer sticky or too <laughs> sticky, you can't get them off the sheet anymore. You're not going to use them anyway, but it is fashion forward. So setting some, one of the things we talk about in the Get Organized Challenge class is setting your goals for purge. Are you going to purge by the pound, by the inch, mm -hmm. by the timeline, right? So anything that's older than 10 years, or I have this box that I'm going to fill, you know, three inches, or I have this scale and I'm going to fill five pounds of purge. There's a lot of ways to- that's a great challenge. Yeah, give yourself a little goal and then- and if you get one of those, um, one of the gals that's in the Get Organized Challenge gets the big boxes from the um, post office, the flat rate shipping oh, boxes, yeah. and she fills it up. And then when it's full, she tapes it up and sends it right off to Ronald McDonald House. And that is her. What a great idea. Right. It's simple. It's ready to go. I love that. Just add tape out the door it goes. And she says, and then I can't, like some people are like, I'm just going to sit, put this over here for six months if I don't mm -hmm. open it. She doesn't have that option. It box, is, ship it off. It is gone immediately. So she puts it right into her shipping box. So there's a lot of stuff though that happens in your head with yeah. purging. And so sometimes just recognizing what's happening in mm -hmm. your head will alleviate that. But it's exactly like your closet. There's stuff yeah. you're never going to wear again. It's time, yeah. right? And I yeah. and I I think we can relate it too. Like I never want to throw away clothes. I always donate them, and I love that we can do that with our craft products well as well. And I think if we get that into our heads of let's donate it to a teacher or to Ronald McDonald House or someone that will use right. it, you feel so much better about getting rid of it yeah, because absolutely. it's not a waste. Senior centers are always looking for stuff like that. I mean, they're so. I mean, you could just ask your scrapbooking community who. Yeah. And there's there are people who make scrapbooks for. Is that Wings, Scrapbook Wings or something? There's a couple of groups out there that make scrapbooks for disabled veterans mm -hmm. or they make scrapbooks for different causes. And if you, they would you use love to have your yeah, stuff. Yeah, so there's a lot of good places to transfer. All right, number five, our fifth tip is to set goals. So you mentioned kind of goals for purging. What are some other goals that we could we could set? You know, it's they, that kind of repeats through all of the first tips, right? So you want to set goals for how much you're going to get done, for how much you're going to purge, um, for almost well, when the first get organized challenge I did, and you got to write them down. Um, goals not put to paper are seeds without soil, right? They're going to blow away in the wind. So you have to write them down, and you have to see them, and you might have to get other people involved in them, but. The, the big goal, the big benefit that you write is the thing that you're going to refer back to mm -hmm. all the time. When you feel like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. What's the point? So setting up that big goal, that big benefit that goes with your goals is going to be really kind of the key. But every step along the way, I'm going to sort six inches of paper today. I'm going to get through this whole tin of brads today, whatever goal it is. Um, and and give yourself a reward too. I mean, there's some of you will be listening, taking the Get Organized Challenge. It's really a key piece of when I do X, my reward is Y. And sometimes it's as simple as a bubble bath or a visit to Starbucks or whatever it is. But setting a goal everywhere along the line is going to be really, really important to your success. That's fun. Do you do those challenges like ongoing? We do. Uh, right now we're in the middle of a 12-week challenge. It's the first time I've done 12 weeks. Um, and that is sponsored by Creative Scrapbooker Magazine. But I do in Jan, well, it'll probably be in March this year, um, an eight-week challenge. Mm -hmm. And we'll make sure and let everybody know it's totally free. Um, and it is step-by-step. Step. So what happened? I would go to uh, seminars and conventions, and I would teach this class about organization. And it was two hours, and people would leave there fired up. I'm going to do this. Ah, totally excited. And they would get there and they would look in their room and they would go, she doesn't know. <laughs> right. And so I thought I got to break it down. I got to make it s simpler for everybody. And um, so that's how the eight week get organized challenge was born. So the first week we talk about setting yourself up for success and 
the forming the foundation, which again goes back to that brain piece of um, of it. And then we talk about paper and embellishments, photos, mementos, and it really does for people break it down like you. And the assignment is you only have to do six inches of paper. You only have to do this. And then people feel like, oh, yeah, I can, I can do that. I can do yeah. that. And we have an online group. So when you feel like I'm not inspired anymore, there's somebody out there. Or when you feel like no one has a room as bad as mine. First of all, look at my sister's room. <laughs> <laughs> but there are, um, and I, I'll tell you something else about my sister in a second. But there, there's every, everybody's had a challenge that's similar when you start talking to people and those people will inspire and motivate you. Mm-hmm. I think that's so. what's great is doing it in a community um, setting like that where you're getting inspiration, you're kind of held accountable because you want to check in and you're right. getting all of the information too. So that's a great challenge yeah, to offer. Yeah, getting resources. My sister, I never thought about teaching a class and I've been teaching now almost the entire time, but um, I, she said, you should teach a class. And I go, nobody needs a class and organization. Like I filed my underwear when I did, right? Like I was just <laughs> like, it's so out of my box to think that. And we were in her house and she, we're standing kind of down the hall from her craft room and she grabbed my face and turned it. And she goes, I need an organization class. And yeah. I looked in her room and I was like, you are right. That's right. probably, and that was it. So it's all my sister. Every Aww. step of the way, she's been you the have one. Her who, to thank. I know that she's been the one. So she was the biggest, I'll tell you something else. She was the, she's going to laugh when she listens to this. She was the biggest naysayer about the scrap rack. She is like, that is never going to work. I have too much stuff. La, 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 la. So then when it came, when it arrived on our first shipment, I went to her house with this multi, so it comes in an individual base and then you can add on. Mm -hmm. And we organized her room and she was like, this is amazing. You're right. She had like four base units. She has like seven now, but she had four base units hooked together. And then she was in the military. So when they moved, she was able to take all the components off her scrap rack, stand them up in a tote, fold down her bases. And when they got to Italy, she popped up the bases, took everything out of the tote, that was it. All done. Yeah. And she was like, Easiest okay, craft room I move. owe you. Yeah. yeah. She's like, I owe you the biggest apology. This is the greatest thing since sliced bread. I moved to Italy. I have my room set up. My friends who have craft rooms for years still don't have their set up. I'm done. Whatever. So, yeah. So, she's it. That's awesome. All along. I should I should name something else after other than a buddy bag. <laughs> well, tell us about the buddy bags because those are a great part of your system as well. So, the buddy bags were born from going to um, shows and customers telling me what they needed. And I remember this gal standing in my booth saying, I need something that does this. And I was like, I can make that. That's easy. That's an easy problem to solve. And I went home and started making buddy bags in all these different sizes. And they evolved. We had 10 of them the last time I was here. We have like 20 now. And um, What's happening, the nice thing about them is they're easy to adapt to, to what's happening in the market as things change. It's easy to create one that's going to work for that particular product. And, um, but when they first came out, when we first started introducing them, um, I wasn't sure what I was going to name them. So like the first ones were for specific things, like the Shelly Buddy Bag is for washi tape. And then when I got the samples back from the factory and I was playing with them, I was like, you could also put memento ink in here. You can also put golf balls in here. Mm -hmm. Like, what am I going to do? And I am a handbag collector. And oftentimes handbags have women's names, right? Like the designers name them. Mm -hmm. So I was like, huh, why can't I give these girls names? That would be fun. And then I thought, why don't I name them after people in the community who, so we have so this Get Organized Challenge, I've had over 30,000 people take that class. Wow. Right? So there's an online Facebook group of about 25,000. Well, I couldn't answer all those questions. So the, all most of the buddy bags are named after people who are part of our community who spend time in there oh. sharing videos, answering questions, finding links for people, explaining things. I'm a little bit of a beach ball teacher. So explaining things that I didn't make clear. And so that's who most of the buddy bags are named after. So that's it's been really a really neat. Yeah, it's been really fun. And when we introduce a new one, oh, we got a couple coming out next year. Um, I do this, an event called Tuesday Live, where I answer people's questions for an hour on Tuesday about organization. And one of the funnest things is when we have a new buddy bag to get on the phone to whoever that is Aww. and call them during Tuesday Live and say, hey, it's Tiffany. Guess what? Oh, the last girl's like, no, no, I'm 
not getting a body bag. That this is, is incredible. So no one's home. No one's home for me. And it's just, oh. It's like Ellen. Like you, yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah, right. <laughs> call them up. I love that. That's so fun. Yes. Yeah, so it's been really, it's been in that, although I have to say everything in this career, like certainly there's been days of frustration, but in general, I it's so fun. It is fun. The the hobby is fun. The people are amazing. Yeah. The connections that you get to make. So yeah, really, it's fun. really awesome. So and you have a new system coming out. The this slide stash and store. Yes. Yes. I uh, get tongue tied there on my s's. Yes. Uh, but did we come up slide stash and store? Super simple solution. So one of the things about bottles and jars and containers is that when they're on a shelf, even if they're organized or they're under your cabinet or they're in a cabinet, but they're organized and you reach into something, Mm -hmm. everything else gets knocked Mm -hmm. over, right? Under your kitchen sink, your bathroom sink, the garage, it doesn't matter. The same thing happens. And that would annoy the heck out of me. Mm -hmm. I got to fix that. And that is how this was born. So it is a series of trays in different sizes that hold all these different things. And you line them up and they're just like they were lined up on a shelf and you grab it and slide it out and pull out what you want and slide the tray back so in. Smart. So easy. And not just for crafting. And this is for any cabinet in your house, really. Right. So think about one of the ones is called Big Bertha. They're in six sizes. So Big Bertha is the biggest one. She's actually designed around spray bottles of cleaning things. So think about under your mm-hmm. kitchen sink when you reach back and you knock over the mm-hmm. comet, grabbing something else. And then the comet has now spilled under the sink and no one wipes it up right away, right? right? We're just like, ugh. Like you might not even stand it up. And then you're like, when I put the fantastic back, I'll clean up the comet. <laughs> but that's not what happens. You open the door and you Shut slide the back in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. So, and th- that was a huge, same thing under the bathroom sink. There's all of those, you know, I shop at the wholesale store. So I don't get just one bottle of shampoo. I have three, I have four toothpaste. I have three things of Q-tips and mm-hmm. they're just a mess. And so that lines all that stuff up. So you just pull it out and- get what you need and slide it back in. And so everything stays clean and neat and tidy. And it's really, I am goofy over it. Like I get talking about it on my live event. And then I just have to say like, stop it. Like you're just being silly. It is so, um, yeah. I'm going to need lots of those because I think that's a great answer to a lot of my problems in it's, un, under the sink, the cabinets everywhere. So this yeah, will be great. It's so simple. Anywhere that there's depth that you have to reach into. Mm-hmm. And um, I've already had, they're 13 and a half inches deep. And I've already had a number of people say, can you make these in 10 inches? My upper cabinets are 10 inches. So spices and paper goods. And I mean, it's just crazy. Acrylic paints, like anything, anything that you can stand up, but you want to group together. Right. And- and yeah, wow. and you can just like, and you can pull the whole thing off your shelf if you want. Let's say you want paint, and pull the whole paint off your shelf, set it on your workspace, work out of the tray, mm-hmm. and then put it back. And it's really so it's very simple, and yeah, it's just it's a super simple solution. Slide stash store, love it, That's it. genius. That's all I got. I'm always That's excited all I got. to see what you come up with <laughs> next. Well, it has been so fun to speak with you today. Is there any other any other tips that you want to share, or anything else before we end our episode today? Boy, um, gosh, I am, let me think. What would be if I was going to leave you with one parting idea? What would it be? I think, you know, I just have to go back to perfect is the enemy of good. No matter what you're doing in life, have a good, do a good job. Do the best job you can do, but don't worry about perfection and stop looking at Pinterest. So smart. (laughs) Great advice. I love it.